what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest dirt face based on Android 13 and if you're wondering about the build date this is the 8th January 2023 build if I show you the about section this is how it looks like we have the dirt face logo up top and the platform version or the Android version shows as Android 13 of course if you keep tapping on it you will get the Android 13's easter egg looks beautiful obviously let me go back from here we have the dirt face version as 13 official tango and again 8th january build it's mentioned and the build maintainer is orpon firefly so huge thanks to the developers of this rom we have the security patch as january 5th 2023 and the stock kernel here is the 4.14 azure kernel it's linux status showing as enforcing and if you want to flash this rom all the flashing guides will be present in the description let me tell you if you are using the latest stable orange fox recovery to flash this rom and if you are decrypted and first step is wiping things so if you are wiping dalvi cache system data and vendor after that, you need to reboot the recovery once, otherwise if you flash the ROM and the DFE version 4, it will not boot at the same time. Right after you wipe those cache Dalvi system data and vendor, make sure you reboot the recovery once. So after rebooting the recovery once, you can just go ahead and flash the ROM with the DFE version 4, it should boot fine if you are decrypted. Let me show you the system settings, we got a Durfist updated over here, you can check for updates from here. And we have the other options like the USB configuration is there for convenience you can set it to file transfer if you want. Then we have the buttons here we get the enable taskbar, invert layout, edge long swipe action this is the extended swipe kind of thing. And we have this disable power menu on lock screen and inside power menu we have the device controls panic trigger and the advanced restart all these options and even we have this power menu style changing option. So right now with the A12 it looks like this. But you can also go with the A11 power menu style, so that's huge. You can go into a totally different way in this and the power menu just is more convenient in Android 11 I would say. You can control or toggle your lights and stuff, the smart home lights with this feature. So really handy I would say. Or you can go even with Android 8 style. Let me show you, this is how it looks. Again amazing looking options. And we have this grid option. Let me show you how this one looks. Okay, so it comes from the bottom and this is how the power menu looks with this. And we have the legacy Android 7. Oh my God, you get all the power menu styles from Android 7 to Android 13. That's again a huge thing I would say. So yeah, pretty much I do love these kind of options where you get to choose from anything that you want. Long press power button toggle torch is also here. And we have this wake up device, control playback and the click to take partial screenshot etc options. And we have the gesture and motion and in here we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke assistant. And let me show you, you can actually use the Google Assistant with swiping from the corners and we have this height gesture bar. Then we have the length and the radius customization for the pill bar. I have customized it as you can see. We have the two button and three button navigations. We have the swipe to take screenshot that is actually working fine with the share, edit, delete and the Google lens and even the capture mode feature is present. Brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar does work fine. We have this quick, quick setting pull down and we have this press and hold power button actions and we have the quickly open camera all these things are present in the gestures and motions also the live translate is present all the customizations are inside this dark space i'll show you that later but first let me show you the home screen let me add the battery widget again so that i can show you so for some reason the battery widget is not working right now it shows loading but sometimes i have seen it was working i don't know what happened to it but yeah right now it shows loading so i'll just remove it for the time being so yeah the clock widget and stuff is working fine by the way i have been using a wallp wallpaper over here but you can use any wallpaper that you want i just added this subscriber account widget that too is working fine and yes do subscribe to the channel guys if you have not yet let me show you to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and scrolling on it is working fine once it loads i would say as you can see right now it's smooth enough and here if i go into the home screen and show you the settings of it let me show you which launcher is this. So this is the Derp launcher present by default here. It has a lot of customizations. We have the icon packs, the drawer theme icons, the desktop labels and the drawer labels etc. Then we have this app drawer background opacity, icon size, font size and even max lines for label customization. We have the suggestion disabling option, show lens button and stuff. All these options are present but sometimes I have noticed like if I go into anything like this icon pack, if I just go back. I think the settings will force close for once and as you can see it did that. The screen will just go black and it just like force reboots the launcher kind of. So yeah this happens if you tweak any settings. Otherwise it's working totally fine. There is the double tap to sleep anywhere and stuff. All those things are working fine and talking about the thing which kind of speed. Yes it is working fine. Let me show you one more time. 
So I just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. So no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner speed, if you're noticing. Very fast and snappy fingerprint scanner experience, I would say. Now, of course, swiping up will get you to the app drawer and the PixArt, of course, was not there. That app has been restored because I was restoring my Google app data backup. Otherwise, except for PixArt, these are the stock apps which are present on this ROM. Swiping down on the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel. And yes, the quick setting panel do tune into white color if you are on the light theme and it will go black if you are on the dark theme. So that's beautiful. And I have added multiple toggles like the FPS counter and stuff is here. You should not worry about it. We have this VPN tethering volume panel and the sound toggle and stuff. And in terms of this reboot toggle, yes, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. The dark space option is there. So you can go directly into the customizations and we have this ambient display, dark theme, data saver hotspot. And we have the night light. The screen recording is also there. You can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. We have all these other features like the big files as limited and stuff, airplane mode. And we have the Google Home controls, the battery saver, auto rotate, etc. Options. Even the Bluetooth toggle shows up the Bluetooth battery and stuff. So yeah, this is how the quick setting panel looks like. By the way, the power menu of course appears like this. And if you tap on restart, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And talking about the recent panel, this is how it looks like. You can take a screenshot, you can clear all that from right here. If you want to go into the split top mode, you can definitely do that from right here. And as you can see, the split top mode is actually working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Now let's talk about the stock camera. This is the most interesting part because this Android 13 ROM does come with MIUI camera and that's just huge. Let me show you the settings of it because it's really interesting in here. We have this MIUI kind of camera settings and we have even the experimental features and stuff. Let me show you if you scroll down, we have this beautify in portrait mode. We have this other options that you can toggle on or off, but these are experimental on the bottom because we have, as you can see, it shows experimental features, internal magic tools and stuff. All these things are there, but some may not work over here. Not really sure. But yeah, we have the other MIUI kind of options like the save previous mode then the pocket mode, shutter sound, customization and stuff. And in here we can change the camera modes to more tab or more panel. You can record video by pressing and holding the volume buttons. And we have this volume button function. You can set it to shutter if you want. And all these other options are there. You can choose a watermark and turn it on if you want, or you can customize that too. But here, let me show you in the portrait mode too, we have this beautification mode and stuff. You can control it. And we also have the normal video mode where you can shoot up to 4K 30 FPS with the rear camera. And if you go in the front camera, you can shoot up to 1080p 30 FPS with the front camera. And as you can see, the front camera is working fine, no issues whatsoever. I did take some pictures, but let me show you the pro mode is here, but you can take only the photos with the pro mode. There is no pro video mode over here, of course. But overall, this MIUI camera is amazing. Even the front flash and stuff is working. Let me take a photo as you can see. Again, the front flash and stuff, everything is working fine. And you just noticed how quickly it took the photo. And yeah, the quality is good enough, I would say. Let me show you, I have taken some portrait kind of selfies and just look at the background blur. The background blur is amazing. And definitely considering this was a budget device from three years ago, the camera quality is insane over here. And let me show you the other picture that I took. Again, this is a rear camera photo. Just notice how beautiful the quality is. I would say this is again one of the best camera quality you could get with the price category of the device. I would say overall to have the MIUI camera on Android 13 custom ROM is an amazing experience for devices like the Redmi Note 7 Pro in my opinion. Like the K20 Pro with Android 13 ROMs does not come with MIUI camera but the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Redmi Note 10 Pro does. So that's definitely a plus point I would say for the Redmi Note 7 Pro dark space settings and in here you will get the customization yes this rom has amazing customization with each and everything and in the status bar we have the battery style you can choose it to icon circle text you can change the battery percentage position you can have the clock and date customization with the background chip and stuff and here we have the status bar items it's a bluetooth etc icons traffic indicator you can enable if you want i'm just showing you the glance of the customization because it will take more time if i go into thorough customization we have the dt current stuff in the quick setting we have this quick setting layout and stuff then we have the clear all button and here in the layout of it you can actually customize the vertical layout and stuff if you want let me go back from here. We have the lock screen UI. We have the lock screen clock font style and stuff. You can choose how you want the font to look actually. So that's good. We have the charging animation, lock screen charging info and the temperature unit and stuff and the ambient display or edge lighting kind of thing you can enable. Battery bar when charging or always show battery bar you can have over here. And we have the general settings where you get the Android P style animation, the parallel space option too, if you want to enable that. But I think if you enable the parallel space, 
it will actually be weird for the app lock kind of thing i'm not sure but here in the customization section we have this ui style too so again you can change the whole ui style to these many options and we have the advanced monet theme settings and in here you can change the vibrant or expressive and the spirits and stuff all these things tint background option is there we have the headline and body fonts these are the fonts you get of course you do get the nothing dot font if you want that separately and we have the icon packs these are the icon packs which are present by default here and the wi-fi icon styles are also there and even the signal icon styles so notice how many options are there and we have the icon shapes too if you want to see that in the pulse settings we have the nav bar pulse the lock screen and the ambient pulse the gravity option is there we have this bottom top center gravity and we have the center mirror these are for the pulse options so yeah all these functionalities are there now let me talk about the battery and in here i'm pretty disappointed to see that it doesn't show you the battery charging cycle or the current battery capacity and battery capacity all those things are simply missing but at least it does show the battery temperature on the bottom over here we do have a sleep mode you can toggle things if you want you can customize it if you want to enable the sleep mode we have this battery optimization per app and the battery charge warning and the usage and stuff with the aku battery app and with that my battery life that i have been getting is insane it's above 10 hours of screen on time that's a huge number i would say and in the health section it shows as 96 percent that's because i have replaced the battery this is a new battery that i have been using for months now and with that the battery life that i'm getting is insane pretty much because even the screen off or the standby time you can see is about six days and even the combined use is about two days worth of usage so in my opinion the battery life is one of the best that you will get for the redmi note 7 pro here of course if your battery health is good the fast charging is also working fine you should not worry about it at all in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like if you scroll down more we have this vibration and haptics then if you scroll down even more we have this mute media volume on silent or vibrate we have the show volume panel on the left side by the way this is how the volume panel looks you can toggle it off so that the volume panel appears from the right side we have this volume steps option for each thing like ringer system voice call etc and we have this additional settings to where you will get the screenshot charging sound charging vibration etc options and we have the me sound announcer too and from here you can choose the presets i have been using it with the youth edition with that the sound quality with the headphone jack has been amazing even the other presets like the bass booster and stuff is there now let me show you the volume panel how it looks like while playing music this is how it looks and if you tap here you can see the app volume of course and you can switch the output device from right here and here in the quick setting panel too this is how it looks and of course you can switch from here too you can pause the music from right here it looks beautiful by the way let me show you the expanding option this is how it looks once you expand the volume panel and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here in the display settings this is how it looks we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness inside live display we have the color calibration rgb control and here we have the lock screen customization and in here we have this face unlock customization i'll show you that later we have the skip lock screen show device controls control from lock device and the ambient display options are there but it's not going into it i don't know why me show you okay so it's force closing the ui for some reason if i go into the ambient display but that's how it is we have the display size and text and stuff and in the dark theme if you go we have this pure black option for some reason if you want to enable that but this device has an ips display there is no point to enable the pure black we have the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up double tap to sleep and the wake up on plug also we have the full screen apps and the display cutout option in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from here and you get to choose from 16 colors for the basic and wallpaper colors we have the dark theme the themed icons and the app grid is up to 6x6 but i have been using with the 5x5 and we have the system fonts there are again those plethora of fonts over here you should not worry about it and even the system icons are there the safety net test passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any worries the dnm info stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in dnp and the google photos unlimited backup is here so if you are looking for that feature yes this rom has it and the ir blaster is also working fine if you are looking at that light on the top let's jump into the security settings here we have this panic settings and you can set it up i don't have a sim card in the device maybe that is why it shows this white screen not really sure why it's happening but yeah there is this new panic settings i actually don't know what it does should be an emergency kind of option but yeah in the settings of it we do not have a quick unlock option over here i think the quick unlock is enabled by default but we get to see the app lock right here let me actually show you the app lock inside the protected apps we have the google photos and stuff if you are wondering about those also i have added both the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner options i have already showed you the fingerprint scanner speed so let me actually show you the face unlock and right now if i just double tap as you can see 
this is how the lock screen looks like let's just close the music panel so it will look like this but overall yes the double tap to wake and sleep both are working fine from the lock screen and we have this keyword code scanner and the google home option on the bottom shortcuts and if you swipe up from here as you can see this is recognizing the face and yeah it unlocks with that let me show you with the face unlock one more time let's just swipe up and hold the device towards my face and it unlocks so yeah pretty fast and snappy way to unlock your device with the face unlock i would say and here if i show you the app lock this is how it looks like if i tap the finger bit scanner as you can see the app actually unlocks so yeah, app lock is working perfectly fine here and in terms of overall performance yes, scrolling and stuff in twitter is working perfectly fine yes if you come from a really fast device it will definitely feel a little slow but as you are noticing there is no huge choppiness at all and the scrolling in twitter is working perfectly fine with other apps too i have noticed the scrolling is not buggy or something yes the screen definitely feels slower if you come from a 120 hertz device otherwise i would say for a budget device like this if you're used to it you should not be having any issues the twitter scrolling is perfectly fine in my opinion and even in play store as you can see the scrolling is not bad it is scrolling pretty fast otherwise for daily driving performance i would say this rom has been really good and this rom definitely offers a lot of customization so you should not miss anything but yeah, overall, if you want to guess about the performance, here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the performance. The Durface ROM is here for the Redmi Note 7 Pro and this is great because it comes with Android 13, comes with MIUI camera, comes with a lot of features. You should not miss anything. The whole device performance is great. The scrolling, the swiping and stuff everywhere while daily driving, I did not see any issues. You can definitely daily drive it. Yes, vault calling and stuff should be working fine. If you insert a SIM card over here, you get a bunch of power menus and stuff. So all these features does make this ROM amazing. In my frank opinion let me know in the comments what do you guys think and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet please share this video with your friends if they want to know about the latest dirt face storm on the redmi note 7 pro and how it's working with android 13 this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now